Halo Infinite, not so open world, according to 343. Why is that? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you our news and informational video when it comes to Halo. We're talking about Halo Infinite today, so if you like these news and informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button so it lets me know you want to see some more content like this, and it greatly helps out this video so more people get to stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. And if you want to stay up to date as we ramp up to Halo Infinite, make sure to tap subscribe guys, so let's get right into the content here. So as the dust has settled, some news stories that I feel like have kind of fallen through the cracks are kind of starting to pop up now as we, you know, we were so bombarded with so much information with uh, the reveal of the gameplay back in July 23rd and the sequential information after that with free to play multiplayer, open world, oh my gosh, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, some stories kind of got left behind and some of them now starting to crop up and I found this one which came out on July 24th, just the day after the reveal of the campaign gameplay and I feel like it kind of helped clarify what the gameplay we're going to be expecting for the campaign and it might not be so open world. I mean, my initial reaction when I saw the trailer, I was like, or the gameplay, I was like, wow, this is really great. And they open up that map, it looks like something you would see as an open world kind of game. I like that hot Warhog design. Dude, this is open world Halo. What? And which really got my hopes up. And now uh, some clarification from 343, as you know, they've never stated open world. They said open and expansive world. They've said that specifically multiple times, but they've never said open world. There's a little quote right there, which is very easy to understand and would be very much needed if they're going to say this is a truly open world game. And they've been kind of straying away from that. And this interview with a couple of 343 developers kind of helps add more clarification to what kind of campaign experience we will have with Halo Infinite. Destructoid, which is a notable news outlet when it comes to gaming, had a bit of a conversation with Paul Crocker, who is the Associate Creative Director at 343, talking about the campaigns single player experience and how it really will play out. They asked him if Halo Infinite takes in a single continuous open world, say like you would think of like GTA, Grand Theft Auto, Assassin's Creed, games like that. And this is how Crocker answered it. The simple answer is that it takes place in a huge world that is open and expansive. We have a storyline that pulls you through it, which effectively unlocking certain areas. But as you progress through it, you have the ability to backtrack and explore to your heart's content. There's a lot to find out in the world. Again, this is another instance of 343 heads out there making a clear distinction between what Halo Infinite is going to be, what the world is going to be like, and what like a open world kind of game would be. As we you know, we're very familiar with like the linear kind of campaign experience that we've had throughout every Halo game ever, and this one seems to be a little bit more open-ended. Destructoid specifically mentions open world, and Crocker kind of goes into the point of trying to clarify what they're understanding from what they've seen from 343. So it sounds like it's not necessarily an open world where you, as soon as you load in, you can go wherever you want, whenever you want, it's just free range, whatever you want to do. It seems like it's a bit more tailored, a little, bit, a little bit more linear. So this openness that they're going with the campaign doesn't sound necessarily like a GTA, you know, Red Dead Redemption level kind of open world, but it sounds more kind of like akin to some of your favorite missions that we had throughout the Halo franchise. More like the second mission in Halo, that part where say like you have to go find that fallen drop pod or whatever, get some equipment, and they can go to these, what, three different locations to rescue some Marines, and you can choose which direction you'd like to go about doing that. I think we're gonna see a lot of that kind of open world kind of experience when it comes to Halo, not necessarily a drop you in the middle of everything and just go out and have some fun, which, you know, obviously we would like to do that in Halo. It sounds like we'll be able to do that, but it's gonna be a much more tailored experience, which is good to see because you know, we're very familiar with our more cinematic linear experiences, which is much easier to tell a much more cinematic kind of experience compared to an open world game, which is really tough to kind of connect all these different storylines together. It's much easier to do it that way, which I think it's much more akin to 
proper Halo storytelling, but it has the ability for you to keep going back and check out other parts of the world to explore more, which exploring is going to be a very important part of Halo Infinite. It's not just going to be like because you want to, there's going to be purpose behind it. And it seems like it's going to be attached to equipment as we know that's coming back in Halo Infinite, very similar as we had with Halo 3, as we saw with the gameplay trailer with the grapple shot and the drop wall. Uh, those are different types of types of equipment you'll find in the open world. I'm assuming you'll have different kinds of unlocks and Jerry Hook, who is the head of design at 343, kind of goes into a little bit more detail about that. Chief, as he explores the ring, he's going to find more equipment. He's always going to find ways to upgrade that equipment and it's not all about power, but it's about options for the player. We want to ensure that players are able to make the choices to be successful in the ways they want to play the game. Now we touched on this in a previous video talking about how it looks like maybe the upgrade system that's gonna be in Halo Infinite might be tied more to the equipment that you'll be finding throughout the world. Now is that equipment something you just kind of come across while playing the mainline story games or is it something you actually have to go out and search for? Maybe just like the main aspect of the equipment you'll probably find throughout just playing the campaign. But if you wanna go in and upgrade and perfect your gameplay, kind of micromanage it, you might have to do a little bit exploring within the open world which would give you a reason why to backtrack and go into more certain areas to kind of find different parts maybe like some equipment upgrades that can make your gameplay better in some other way you would like to play my assumption is more that it's not going to be like the grapple shot which i think a lot of people think it's going to be like a, a stable ability you have throughout the whole entire game what i'm thinking is you'll be unlocking equipment throughout the game and you get to choose which kind of equipment you want to have on you at all times as your like recharge ability but as you progress through the world if you pick up a random equipment say like we did in that campaign demo with the drop wall then it, that takes over your equipment but it's a one-time use and once you use that equipment it defaults back to your selected upgrade equipment which and I'm guessing in this gameplay was the grapple shot, which personally I'm actually really excited about that because one, it gives a way to customize your gameplay and play how you would like when it comes to Halo Infinite. And it does seem like they're taking that into consideration as the way we saw in that campaign trailer with the grapple shot, how that guy kind of shot himself up to the top level area. That was actually a flanking route. Like there was an intended route that's designed for that section where you could just walk right up to where you needed to be, but they decided to use that grapple shot to explore and flank around the enemy in a completely different way that probably wasn't intended but was allowed which is really great to see that Halo Infinite might have those kind of gameplay possibilities where you won't be playing the game the same way as somebody else which is something brand new to the Halo campaign experience gives you a reason to have more replayability and I think it's a great opportunity for 343 to kind of expand on the campaign experience well let me know in the comment section down below are you guys more into this openness kind of world did you want an open world Halo are you kind of looking forward to what they're doing with the campaign or are you a little disappointed with this information let me know in the comment section down below i do read our comments and try to apply to most of them as well if you're new to the channel or miss any content for me check out the videos on the screen right over here if you miss any news and information uh, if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so so thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it and i'll catch you all in the next one peace out